This is going to be the lecture over chapter 26. This uh, part of it is going to be over uh, section 26.1. We're going to be looking at uh, interference and coherent sources of uh, light. So the overlap of waves uh, from two sources of monochromatic light forms an interference pattern. So the principle of linear superposition states that the total wave disturbance at any point is the sum of the disturbances from the separate waves. Now constructive interference results when two waves arrive at a point in phase. In other words, they're hitting whatever the wavelength happens to be for that particular light. <clears throat> then and that's what how they're arriving here. Destructive interference uh, results when two waves arrive at a point at exactly half a cycle out of phase. And that's what you're seeing here. You've got a quarter of a cycle here, and then you've got something that's on the other side of the cycle uh, over here. And that's when they're arriving there. So let's go and let's take a look here at section itself. Okay. <clears throat> we talked about sinusoidal waves in the past with a single frequency and a single wavelength. So in optics, such a wave is characteristic of monochromatic light or light of a single color. Uh, but common sources of light, such as incandescent light bulbs or flames, do not emit monochromatic light. Uh, there's a continuous distribution of wavelengths. So we can approximate monochromatic light because precise monochromatic is somewhat of an idealization. Um, so some optical filters block all but a very narrow range of wavelengths. Uh, gas discharge lamps, such as a mercury vapor, emit light with a discrete set of colors, each having a narrow band of wavelengths. Uh, the bright green line in the spectrum of a mercury vapor lamp has a wavelength of about 546.1 nanometers. But it does have a certain spread. And that goes on either side of that. So by far the most uh, nearly monochromatic light source available is going to be the laser. The helium neon laser is inexpensive, readily available, emits red light at 632.8 uh, nanometers with a line width uh, on the order that you see here, or about one part in 10 to the ninth. Um, we're going to assume here that we're working with monochromatic light. This is an interesting little application of diffraction interference. You can see waves that are coming in from the ocean and they are coming in what looks to be like a little separation here between these barrier islands. And you can see the waves as they are doing that. And you can see the same kind of thing uh, happening over here too. That'll be a clue as to what we get into. Interference is going to refer to any situation in which two or more waves overlap in space. Uh, when that does occur, the total displacement at any point at any instant of time is governed by the principle of linear superposition. So basically, when two or more waves overlap, the resultant displacement at any point and at any instant may be found by adding the instantaneous displacements that would be produced at a point by an individual wave if each were just by themselves. So um, displacement for waves on a surface of a liquid, we're gonna mean the actual displacement of the surface above or below its normal level. For sound waves, uh, the term refers to the excess or deficiency of pressure. For electromagnetic waves, we usually mean a specific component of the electric or magnetic field. We're also going to use this term phase. Uh, when we say that two periodic motions are in phase, we mean that they are in step. They reach their maximum values at the same time, their minimum values at the same time, so on and so forth. When two periodic motions are one half cycle out of phase, then the positive peaks of one occur at the same time as the negative peaks of the other and so on and so forth. So let's take a look here at this particular picture. Let's see if we can blow it up. Um, 
We've got interference of waves uh, from two monochromatic sources, S1 and S2, that are in phase and equidistant from the origin. So we've got several different points over here uh, that we're looking at. And at these points, the one, two, uh, P0, P1, and P2, the waves arrive in phase and interfere constructively. At P3, uh, the waves arrive a half second half cycle out of phase and interfered destructively. So this is all divided into different sections. Now these little sections here that you see uh, refer to certain values of M and they refer to the number of wavelengths by which the path lengths differ. So you can see here at these particular points how they're coinciding with um, these waves that are interfering constructively with each other. If they're not on these particular lines, then you can see here that this is a destructive interference. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, uh, this verbal description up here is giving you a description of what's going on here. So the picture that you saw before that we started out with here in a uh, discussion of this was at P2. At P2 lied along a, a difference of two uh, wavelengths in the path lengths. In other words, this one had uh, seven wavelengths here. Um, here we go, one, two, three, six, seven. And then you have nine here, but that's constructively interfering. Um, at P3, you're looking at things that are half, um, half a wavelength out of phase. And that is destructive interference. So you can see here that the formula here is some number M being multiplied by lambda, whatever the lambda is the wavelength. Here, the difference in the path lengths differ by M plus one half. And so this is gonna be your definition of constructive interference as well as destructive interference. And you can see here, um, a, you've got a, a pattern that's developing here whenever you're disturbing the water. Um, the two sources are two agitators driven by the same vibrating mechanism. Uh, the regions of both maximum and zero amplitude can be clearly seen. So you can see here where they're interfering and uh, constructively and then the destructive interference between them. So, uh, light from a single source can be split so that parts of it merge from two or more regions of space, forming two or more secondary sources. Uh, then any random phase change in the source affects these secondary sources equally, and does not change the relative patterns. So light from two such sources derived from a single primary source with a definite constant phase relationship is said to be coherent. So we'll consider the interference of light from two secondary sources in the next section. So the distinguishing feature of light from laser is that the emission of light from many atoms is synchronized in frequency and phase. As a result, the random phase change mentioned above occur much less frequently. So definite phase relationships are preserved over correspondingly much greater lengths in the beam and laser light is much more coherent than nor, uh, ordinary light. <clears throat>